Canadian college and university soccer teams are about to embark on a year of training like they've never seen before. Due to the pandemic and concerns over athlete health and safety, both the Canadian College Athletic Association, which governs college varsity sports, and U Sports, which governs university varsity sports, have decided to cancel their 2020 fall competitive soccer seasons. Teams are still permitted to train with limited hours, but there will be no games of any kind until next year. Of course, this is devastating news to the hundreds of players and dozens of coaches involved in college and university varsity sport, present company included. But is it possible that there may be a silver lining to the cancellation of competitions when it comes to planning and periodizing training? That's what we'll be discussing today on the Soccer Fitness video blog. Hello, I'm Richard Bucciarelli. This video is brought to you by Soccer Fitness and Speed Training. Please like, share, and comment on the video, and hit the notification bell to make sure you never miss an update. Now here we go. Full disclaimer here to start off. I've been involved in Canadian university soccer for the past 20 years. First as a player, and then as an assistant coach and fitness coach, I was personally very disappointed when I heard about the cancellation of varsity soccer this year as I had spent the entire winter preparing our teams physically, including a specific speed and resisted sprint training program, and I especially felt for and still feel for the players who work so hard all year, including during the pandemic, to prepare for their season. There's no way for any varsity athlete or coach to feel good about the fact that there won't be any competitions this year. But something I've come to learn over the course of this pandemic and the many disappointments that have accompanied it is that oftentimes there is a silver lining, some good news that can follow a gray cloud of bad news. And this is also the case during the pandemic. So the gray cloud of cancellation of Canadian college and university soccer competition this year may have its own silver lining too. What could it possibly be? To answer that question, we'll need to have a closer look at what the 2020 competitive season would have looked like if it hadn't been cancelled. For decades, the college and university soccer seasons have had a competitive schedule with two full 90 plus minute games played on consecutive days back to back on Saturdays and Sundays. The college seasons kept this schedule for six weeks while the university teams bumped it up to eight weeks. Here is a snapshot of the 2019 OCAA and OUA competitive schedules. As you can see, the OCAA men's soccer competitive season had 10 matches played from Saturday, September 6th until Wednesday, October 16th for a total of 10 matches in six weeks or 1.6 matches per week. And in the OUA, they had 16 matches played from Saturday, October 26th until Saturday, October 21st for a total of 16 matches played in eight weeks or exactly two matches per week. And that's just the regular season. If you get into the playoffs, you get an even more demanding schedule. Just take a look at last year's OCAA Final Four playoff schedule. You've got match one, the quarterfinals, on October 26th on a Thursday. Match two, the semifinals, on October 27th, the next day, Friday. And match three, the bronze or the gold medal matches, the very next day again, Saturday, October 28th. The 2019 U Sports Final wasn't much different. You've got match one, the semifinals on Saturday, November 3rd, match two, the bronze and gold medal games on Sunday, November 4th, back to back. Why is it such a problem for soccer players to play so many games each week with only 24 hours of rest in between each game? It's simple. For an adult soccer player, playing more than one game per week increases risk of injury exponentially. But don't take my word for it. A recent study published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine reported that soccer players have a four-fold increase in injury risk when they play games as opposed to simply training, and that this risk rises an additional 30% when there is less than four days recovery between games. So the Canadian college and university system which gives players only 24 hours rest between full 90 plus minute games every single week, 
places the injury risk about as high as it can possibly be for any adult soccer player. In fact, you would be hard pressed to find a more demanding adult competitive soccer schedule anywhere else in the world. Trust me, I've tried. I've written and made a video about this problem before and will link to my articles and video here and in the description below. And as I mentioned previously, I've been through this physically demanding competition schedule myself for five years as a player and an additional 10 as a coach and fitness coach. So I'm very familiar with the difficulties that Canadian college and university soccer players can have trying to stay healthy throughout the year. In fact, as a player, the one and only saving grace accompanying the fatigue resulting from having to play back-to-back -back games every weekend was that I knew my opponents were just as tired as I was because they had the same competitive schedule that I had. So this leads us to the silver lining to the cancellation of the 2020 fall soccer seasons. Players finally have an opportunity to train in a more periodized way managing their training load with enough time to recover in between hard training sessions every week. As restrictions on training and eventually even inter-squad competitions get lifted in college and university, coaches and fitness coaches can now plan a more conventional training schedule with periods or cycles of time in which volume and intensity are higher and others where they're lower. Managing training and competition load in this way will help ensure that Canadian college and university players can both improve and maximize their fitness levels while at the same time minimizing their risk of injury in a way that has literally never been possible before in this environment. As a viewer of my channel, if this sounds a bit familiar to you, that's because I've done several recent videos discussing the topics of periodization of training and also planning, monitoring and managing training load before. There's links to those videos here and in the video description below. All right, so to summarize, while the gray cloud of the cancellation of college and university soccer resulting from the pandemic has been devastating to players and coaches across the country, hopefully coaches and fitness coaches will take advantage of the silver lining, the opportunity to finally develop a safer, more modern, professional, an effective training plan. I know I will. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to like and share this video, leave a comment to let us know what you think about the topic, and hit the notification bell to make sure you never miss an update. We'll see you next time on the blog and until then, keep reaching your soccer fitness goals.